All right, so in this video, we're going to graph uh, piecewise defined functions, okay? Um, remember, piecewise defined functions are defined differently, okay? Each piece is defined by a specific domain relative to that piece of the, uh, of the graph of the function, okay? Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to break the graph into two pieces. We're going to graph one piece at a time, and we'll see what happens from then, okay? Um, one thing you can know, each piece... Uh, this is a quadratic, so this piece of the graph will look like a parabola, at least one side of a parabola in this case, and this would be a linear uh, piece, okay, with a slope of positive 1. So you can use the things you've learned about uh, different types of functions up to this point to help you understand what each piece of the function is going to look like, okay? In this video specifically, we're going to use a table of values. Uh, later on, we're going to use... Uh, the knowledge that you have about each function, and we're going to try to graph these a little more quickly. But uh, let's understand these a little more using a table of values. So, uh, for this first piece, for this quadratic piece, uh, we're going to have we have a domain domain of x is less than zero. Okay, so let's start with some negative values. I'm going to start with negative three, and when we plug that in, I'm going to get negative three squared, which is positive nine. Okay, we want to keep moving closer and closer to zero, where this domain. Uh, ends for the first piece. Okay, let's plug in negative 2. When I square negative 2, I get positive 4. And let's plug in negative 1. And where I plug that in, I get positive 1. Now, even though 0 is not considered part of the domain here, I still want to go up to that value with this piece. And I'll show you what happens with this ordered pair a little bit later on. But remember, x less than 0 doesn't start at negative 1. Okay, it starts just to the left of 0. So, we could think of an x value like negative 0 0.001 fits in this domain, okay? And if we stop our graph at x equals negative 1, we're forgetting a portion of the graph between x equals negative 1 and x equals 0, okay? So for each piece, I want to go up to that domain location. So now let's move on to the second piece. And I'm going to continue to have 0 there because 0 is actually a part of this domain, all right, so when I plug 0 into the second piece, I get positive 1. I'm going to add a few more values here. When I plug in positive 1, I'm going to get 2. When I plug in 2, I'm going to get 3. And when I plug in 3 to that second piece, I'm going to get 4. Okay, so I've got quite a few ordered pairs here. You don't really need this much, especially at this point in the game. You should know uh, what the x squared is going to look like, what the linear here is going to look like. But I, I do want to especially talk about when we get over to the graph, what's going to happen at this point. Okay, so let's move on to the graph now. All right, so as we look back at our table of values, the first ordered pair we had was negative 3 comma 9. Okay, so you see that up there in red. And I'm going to plot negative 2, 4. And then I'm going to plot negative 1, 1. Okay. Now, at 0, 0 for that first piece, that's not a part of the graph. Remember, 0 wasn't part of the domain for that first piece, but I still need to plot that point because the graph is going to go all the way to that uh, location. Again, if we stop at negative 1, we're eliminating what's here between uh, these two points. Okay, So that's why I have to have an open circle there at the origin. It's not a part of the function. Okay but I do need it for the graph. So when I connect all those points, you can see I've accounted for everything to the left of zero. All right, now the green part of the table of values, the linear part of the table of values, okay, I'm gonna plot that first point was at zero, one. So what this does, if you'll notice, there's a, a solid point there in green, there's an open circle there in red, so that allows that vertical line test to still be passed, okay? If I were to draw a vertical line through the y-axis, it's going to touch the green point, but it goes right through the open point at the origin, okay? So that makes it continue to be a function. It's still a function because it passes the vertical line test. Let's plot the other points. Again, we know that's a linear function with a slope of 1, all right? So now I want to connect those dots, and the graph of that piecewise function will look like uh, the combination of what's in red and what's in green, okay? So that's the graph for the first example. All right, move on to the second example. Uh, do a table of values, and then let's check your work. All right, so let's look at example B here. So we've got f of x or y equals 5 for the first piece, and that has a domain of x less than or equal to 2. 
And then for the second piece, y equals 2x minus 3 uh, with a domain of x greater than 2. Okay, so let's start with the, uh, the first part of the domain here, the first piece. So uh, I'm going to put a few points in here. So let's plug in negative 1 for x. Well, there is no x, okay? So no matter what value we plug in that's less than or equal to 2, we're going to get an output or a y value of 5, okay? Let's move a little bit closer to our domain uh, cutoff here at 2. So let's go plug in a 0. Again, that's going to be 5. Let's plug in a positive 1. That's going to be 5. And let's plug in a positive 2. That's also going to be 5. Okay, so no matter what value we plug in for x that fits this domain, we're going to get 5. Okay? Uh, now then, starting at the domain, again, we're going to start at 2. Okay, this is going to be a solid point on our graph. Now, what I plug in for 2 here is going to be an open uh, point on our graph. So I still need to start there, though. I still need to plug in 2 for this to see where that open point is going to be. So if I plug in 2 here, I get 2 times 2, which is 4. 4 minus 3 is 1, okay? So at 2, 1, there's going to be an open circle. That needs to be a part of the graph. It has to be there, okay? Let's plug in 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 3 is 3. Let's plug in 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. And let's do one more. Plug in 5. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. Okay? So we've got plenty. We've kind of done more than we needed to here in terms of a table of values. Um, but I just wanted to make sure you got the, the gist here. All right, so let's move over to the graph and take a look at what this piecewise function is going to look like. So using what's in our table of values, we want to start with uh, the the constant. Uh, when we plugged in negative 1, we got 5. When we plugged in 0, we got 5. When we plugged in 1, we got 5. And when we plugged in 2, we got 5. And because 2 was part of the domain for that first piece, notice the last point is solid. Okay, so we've got a horizontal line there. It's like y equals 5. But we only need the piece from 2 to the left. Okay, now the second piece is going to be a linear function uh, with a slope of 2. All right, so... When we plugged in 2, we got 1. Remember, that needs to be an open circle. That way the graph um, passes the vertical line test, and that one does. Okay. When I plugged in 3, I got 3. When I plugged in 4, I got 5. And when I plugged in 5, I got 7. Okay. So you can see the linear form taking there. Let's connect all those dots, and that's how you graph that piecewise function. Again, notice this open circle has to be there because we need to include everything between 2 and 3. All right, so don't make the mistake of even though 2 is not part of the domain, we still need to have that point present. Okay, all right, so that's how you graph piecewise defined functions.